Hey Aishwarya, how are you? Hi Gul, how are you? Good afternoon. Very well. Thank you. How are you doing? And congratulations on conducting your very first live. Thanks, Gul. As you can imagine, I'm a bit nervous, you but don't need uh, to since you're great, absolutely great. <laughs> Since, since you're you're here and you're going to take over, I'm not uh, too concerned. So, so I think uh, you know, since you both are very famous people, I think we have quite a few Gold's people who joined us here. We will give huh? it to Gul. I'm famous for no right reason. Now. I swear, I'm famous for doing the right thing and oh. the responsible thing, and clearly the most sustainable thing uh, by you. making sure more people. Take sustainability seriously. So, thank you, Ashwarya, for taking out time and and joining of us. Of course, We're deeply grateful and actually humbled that uh, someone like you has agreed to be part of eTalk. And uh, we're really very interested in in knowing uh, more about you. But over to Matthew. Oh, thank you so, so much. So, I, I, I'll uh, I'll quickly just uh, introduce uh, you know Ashwarya. So, Ashwarya and I. Met uh, on a panel for Y20, which is a subset of the G20, and you know I was talking about sun fuel and electric vehicles, what I'm really passionate about. And Aishwarya was talking about uh, you know sustainability and fashion, what she's really passionate about. So, so we actually thought we will name this e-talk session uh, the pathway or runway to a greener world. Uh, so, so Aishwarya was really impressive on the panel. And uh, I, you know, stopped her after that and asked her if she can join uh, our platform eTalk for a session with Gul. Um, and she was really happy to jump on and talk about it. She's she's an advocate for uh, climate change. Uh, she's a fashion activist. She's also the voice of Regen for Puma. Uh, I don't know if I said uh, Puma, Puma, right, but Puma, I should Puma, correct me on I that. And she's, she's also the UN ambassador uh, for sustainable goals. Uh, so Aishwarya, thank you for joining us and we're really happy to have you here. You. I, I think I also must uh, quickly just say a word about Gul. I think everybody knows that uh, Gul is an adrenaline junkie, automobile, automobile enthusiast, aviator, <laughs> etc. But I think what's most important is that uh, a lot, a lot of people don't know that Gul is also an entrepreneur, and uh, more so, she's the co-founder at Sunfuel, right? So it, it's a great privilege for us to have uh, Gul and Aishwarya. On this platform, eTalk is uh, is a platform that we started at Sunfuel, where uh, we like to talk to people who are doing something which influences the betterment of the planet, right? In any way, so whether it's to do with electric vehicles, charging infrastructure to support that, or any form of sustainability, I think uh, Sunfuel and eTalk advocating this it uh, goes a long way in spreading the word and that's that's the objective and uh, thanks for uh, being on board go over to you uh, before I, I you know i go to the, the to the agenda that we have um, i do want to say a word about uh, matthew here i know i swear you you mentioned before but um, matthew is co-founder also at sunfuel him and i are alumni from the same boarding school so oh, that ties us very very deeply we both went to the lawrence school lovedale and um, Matthew's role here comes from a very interesting, unique space. Um, and if I may say so, it's not a secret. Uh, I think all, a lot of us, when we become parents, our worldview of the world changes dramatically. And Matthew is no different. He spent uh, a significant part of his marketing career selling big tobacco. And then when he became a father, he realized that he wants to leave this world a better place. And he founded that. And I think that is really what eventually responsibility is about. We all have a pivot point and an inflection point in our lives that makes us change the way we see the world. And I, I think both Matthew and I are in agreement there that having children totally changes your viewpoint, uh, life point and definitely sleep cycle as Matthew is discovering <laughs> second time over. So thank yeah, you, thank, thank you, thank you for a stellar start to this session. And you know, I, I really want to, uh, you know, I mean, of course, the idea is to keep it fluid, uh, Ashwarya, 
and Matthew will jump in with you know queries that he has and you know if he feels the direction needs to go in a particular way but the idea is to touch upon the larger canvas of sustainability and break it down into easy consumable stuff that all of us can do so two things happen sustainability is a word a lot like female or women empowerment often used but not quite correctly in the right context right so let's break down the word sustainability my my first question before we get to the the agenda of today is how do we make a uh, the world a better place to live in one step at a time and an easy um easy way to do so we've got a comment here please stop this english uh, and then hindi mein bhi please boliye english stop to nahi hogi bisla ji ji par hindi mein zarur baat ki jayegi because yahan pe bahut se aise log hain jo hindi bhi nahi samajhte hain matthew hindi nahi samajhte hain ye tamil nadu aur ikar ki kerala se hain to thodi bahut hindi nahi jaate hain par ye baat ye baat zarur ki हम डेफिनेटली दोनों भाषाओं का प्रयोग करेंगे सो आश्वर्या होप दैट्स ओके विद यू बिकॉज़ वी डू हैव सम फोक्स आस्किंग फॉर दैट सो माय वेरी फर्स्ट क्वेरी रियली इज दैट व्हेन वन टॉक्स अबाउट सस्टेनेबिलिटी एंड फैशन इट्स ऑलमोस्ट एन ऑक्सीमोरॉन क्योंकि फैशन हमें लगता है कि हर बार बदली होता रहता है और सस्टेनेबिलिटी जिस तरीके से नॉर्मल लोग उसे समझते हैं वो उसकी विपरीत है वो उसके ऑपोजिट है जैसा कि लोग समझते हैं तो थोड़ा बताइए what is sustainable fashion and how can fashion be sustainable so you you know like this is uh, one of the questions which i got like really early on in the career of like just being into fashion and you know like everybody used to be like but aap karte kya ho exactly like what exactly happens you know like in, in this kind of uh, picture of like fashion activism sustainability what what's happening and i think the only answer to that is that everything that is that happening around us you know the way the climate is changing you see a lot of things which are just just wrong in the world suddenly and you know you feel like delhi mein itna temperature kahan se ho gaya it's september why are we still feeling so hot right these questions are like so kind of uh, on a ground level perspective you feel like ki itni garmi kyu ho rahi hai you know like middle east rising and you can imagine middle east temperatures when you talk about rising in middle east temperatures it's an even bigger conversation how does that happen when you get to the knowing of it you understand uh, how is this happening right like uh, what is contributing to climate change and then what suddenly comes to comes to surface is that fashion is happening to climate change so like how is fashion you know contributing to this climate change or like ye itna galat kaise ho gaya just in terms of, like what what you wear so at the end of the day i wanted to sort of you know just understand it myself and by understanding it myself i wanted to take my audience through this journey of how you can be better with what you wear and how your clothes shouldn't be why someone's dying you know in another country or in your country what's happening right so that is where i think the idea of entire fashion and sustainability and hum better kya kar sakte hain in terms of giving it back is what you wear at the end of the day shouldn't cost someone their life that was the perspective of why fashion even came into picture of sustainability of climate of you know you say everything that's wrong in the world so at the end of the day you would never think fashion will make things worse in the world but as and sustainable fashion along those lines goal is is you know as well as you know is that you know we had this talk in 2020 of at the at the l uh, sustainability forum is that you know what can we do more and that was the first time that i had met you and you know your perspective on it was can we go i still remember aapne pucha tha ki can you can we do something where jaise uh, food ke liye accreditation hota hai that you know this is safe for you to consume can we have something like that in fashion what is safe for you contributing you know severely to 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 what to to the environment so i think with that kind of thing in mind i feel like the entire conversation right now is revolving around that yeah so aishwarya if i can uh aishwarya and go that's, that's a very uh, interesting way to to finish your your sentence and your thought you said you know is, is it did you talk about you know like we have calories when we talk about a food packet is there something that we can have on clothing which will tell us you know the history of where the where it's come from i i think that's a pretty interesting thought that's that's something we should think about or the government should I think, think about right it shops right so there there are some people who do that uh, there was a there is an organization called shop for change which tries to put together uh, people who are uh, conscious in terms of their consumption 
and also make sure that the communities that create the raw material for that fashion are adequately uh, justi- justifiably compensated but stepping away from that for one second you know um, i want to go back before i come back to the cost of fashion aishwarya i want to go back for a bit and talk about uh, how climate change is now not that mirage that everybody would keep referring to climate change is coming climate change is coming the day after tomorrow has happened already in new york today uh, if you've seen images of the kind of floods that manhattan has had over the last 48 hours it's it's it looks like a movie set there was a you know that that movie we all saw about which came out about 10 years ago about day after tomorrow the impact the accelerated impact of climate change aur baat ye hai ki hame lagta hai ki climate change kabhi hoga yeah आज एक चीज करेंगे तो शायद उसका इम्पैक्ट दस साल बाद होगा पर हम ये नहीं समझ पाते कि जो उसका एक्सेलरेटेड एक इम्पैक्ट होता है जो ज्योमेट्रिक होता है इट्स नॉट एरिथमेटिक कि आज एक करोगे तो कल दो होगा तो फिर तीन होगा इट एक्सप्लोर्ड एंड वंस इट एक्सप्लोर्ड यू रियली आर लेफ्ट विद वेरी लिटिल यू कैन डू आई मीन देन यू कैन गो बैक रिस्पेक्टिवली एंड एंड से दैट दैट ओ माई गॉड अब क्या करें and then maybe it's too late aur uh, jahan tak ki india ki jo position rahi hai sustainability point of view se wo hamesha ye rahi hai ki jo developed countries hain unhone apne emissions vagaira jo jis tar pe wo lekar gaye hain ab kyunki wo developed ho gaye hain ab wo chahte hain ki india apni emissions ko uh, address kare aur jo hum karne ko taiyar hain but the i just feel that development and sustainability sometimes come into conflict what are your views on that i mean i know we're stepping away from fashion for a bit but i also want to address this bigger north south conversation which i know you your audience will will appreciate given that you are a un goodwill ambassador of sustainability and since time last 30 30 40 years this global phenomena of the north versus south the, the industrialized developed north versus the third world south which was colonial which probably has um, you know a, a lesser developed ecosystem in in every which way uh, them being where they are and today the same set of rules applying to both the north and the south but today the the, the impact of climate change which earlier was being felt first by the south because they are more fragile ecosystems absolutely today absolutely the impact of climate change has reached the heart of the developed world which is the united states of america yes. and has been for some time with their wildfires and uh, unseasonal snowstorms and now this flooding yes. so i want you to just you know in a nutshell give me your perspective on this raging debate of the north versus south and the how the south must uh, and perhaps at the cost of its development absolutely absolutely adopt no, sustainable you know, measures and can sustainability and development go hand in hand absolutely i think uh, one of the most kind of uh, argumentative uh, in terms of you know just this entire kind of topic but just in a in, in sort of a nutshell goal i feel that this entire crisis that that we are facing today global south is being the most impacted if you see countries in the middle east you see vietnam you see bangladesh sri lanka you see india india is one of the top 10 countries which are most susceptible and vulnerable to climate change what does that mean that means that we will our countries will face worse effects sooner than any el- any else country in the world will receive which we are looking at right the entire himachal pradesh what happened our friends are there you know people have built families in these hills in these mountains and the way just collapsed all together right like we never thought shimla could look like this or you know it could just fall oh, apart Ali. or manali like this right and and to think of as north indians we do vacations every 3 months there every escape for us is oh let's go to himachal pradesh or let's go to shimla it's just like 7 uh, hours drive from from new delhi where i am so just to look at that so we are not talking about so people from global south you know advocates activists individuals general layman people they're not talking about something which is happening in in united states of america or which just happened in nyc brooklyn or manhattan we're talking about something that's happening right next you know our house right next to like what's happening here so this this entire crisis if you see it's so unjust because we are impacted way more country my people of my you know from my country are going to be probably you know, you know like leaving their houses so leaving their homeland soon leaving their communities soon cuz cuz the floodings the droughts the rising sea levels it's all happening to us faster than anybody else and if you look at if we have done that how people in africa have been saying that 
हमने ये क्राइसिस कॉज किया है वी हैव इन कॉज दिस क्राइसिस व्हाई आर वी एट द वर्स्ट एंड ऑफ दिस क्राइसिस एंड दैट इज द दैट इज आई थिंक द एंटायर इंटेंशन दैट यू नो व्हाई आर यू Uh, why do we pay for something that we haven't really contributed to it's unfair so this colonization how you said of climate to be honest is unjust you know in at every level and that is why we keep saying that hamari country se hamare log you know people who look like us people who talk like us or you know just people from our region should be at these you know at these tables where where our futures are being dictated where where we are being uh, you know decided upon so i think that's very important what you said and about you know if development and sustainability can go hand in hand it can but that again comes from if global north is going to fund this justifiably you know if you're actually funding this for example at cop 27 last year in egypt they reached a monumental decision about you know this historic fund that was created for vulnerable countries and just the definition of what that vulnerable countries will be is a difficult part in terms of that you know are you going to be funding india are you going to be funding bangladesh you know where where the most suppliers are sitting out of where more factories are you know built in are you are you are you interested are you willing to invest into green technologies are you in are you willing to give us those kind of technologies where we could you know then say that okay let's do this you know ye to hame cheap padega because at the end of the day cheap kya padega is the only thing that that uh, you know surrounds the entire global uh, south narrative is that people don't people only have enough hamare paas resources nahi hai so at the end of the day we feel that why to move to a greener technology jab ye kaam isse bhi ho sakta hai aur saste mein ho sakta hai so that entire conversation is that if you are willing to fund this for us you are actually willing to give me a greener technology where i don't have to invest but i can work on this so i think the entire it's it's a game of intention you know if you're if you're intent on giving more of actually giving these countries the resources that it needs or or kaise the picture you know will will be a, a developmental picture Because we need development. We can't stop development. Global South countries cannot just stop development because that's a big thing. You know, it's a growing thing for us. So I think at the end of the day, we have to look at you know developed nations. You know, de- to to help the developing nations because the entire intention game is like definitely a uh, a ball game, a changer here. I think. I think that thank you for your insight, and I and I, and I really appreciate the contextualization of the way the the sustainability debate today is. postured between what the global north needs to do and what the global south uh, desperately needs in terms of a the guilt of privilege and the guilt of having uh, the access to the resources that they, ne- they don't necessarily own and and they have the opportunity to exploit but now that privilege and that uh, that sort of uh, that burden that they carry of of justifying where क्योंकि कुछ हद तक अगर एक आर्ग्यूमेंट इस तरीके से ली जाए कि ग्लोबल साउथ की पोजीशन आज यहाँ पर इसलिए है क्योंकि कुछ कुछ ऐसा माना जा सकता है हालांकि ये विवाद का एक मुद्दा है पर ये माना जा सकता है कि आज ग्लोबल साउथ उस पोजीशन में है क्योंकि ग्लोबल नॉर्थ के पास ज्यादा काबिलियत थी रिसोर्सेज की जो रिसोर्सेज शायद हमारे थे पर वापस जाते एक सवाल या मैं एड्रेस करना चाहूंगी इससे पहले की मैं आपसे अगला सवाल पूछू ऐश्वर्या Uh, fashion choices that are sustainable, especially since you've been, uh, I mean, this has been actually asked to me, and I want to uh, address this from Arpan Linder. So, Arpan, uh, what are fashion choices that are sustainable? I don't buy things at the drop of a hat. Uh, this, there are two weddings in my family coming up this month. मेरे पास वो ही दस कपड़े हैं जो मैंने अपने भाई की शादी के लिए बनवाए थे पांच छह साल पहले. Uh, और uh, अब तो चार साल पहले अब मैं वही कपड़े हर जगह रिसाइकल करती हूँ मुझे शौक नहीं है कि अभी नई शादी आ रही है तो मुझे नए कपड़े बनवाने हैं हाँ उन कपड़ों में आपको फिट आना चाहिए उसके लिए फिटनेस बहुत जरूरी है मेरे पास कपड़े 20 साल पुराने भी हैं 24 साल पुराने भी हैं एंड यू नो वो इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग अबाउट फैशन ट्रेंड इज अर्पन दिस प्रेजेंट डे ट्रेंड ऑफ हाई वेस्टेड White leg jeans was there in '99, and I still fit into my jeans from '99. So one way of looking at sustainability is, yeah, I mean, fashion will always come back, and you don't always have to adopt what you, uh, what you see in in the magazines and newspapers. Uh, if something is has 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 value to you, hold on to it because I can give it to you in writing. I've seen two cycles of at my age. of fashion having come around a circle so hold on to your stuff because in 10 more years you'll be back in fashion so that is sustainable the other thing is this value on um, 
making a statement out of repeating your clothes हमारे यहाँ पर अक्सर रेड कार्पेट अपेरेंसेस पे एक ट्रेंड चला था बीच में कि ओ इसने वही आउटफिट पहना जो शायद उसने कहीं और पहना पर ये अब एक एडवोसी एडवोकेसी का तरीका बन रहा है इस बिकमिंग अ मेजर ऑफ योर योर एबिलिटी टू मेक अ आई रिमेंबर सीइंग इन इंस्टाग्राम पोस्ट व्हेन आई वाज स्क्रॉलिंग कपल डेज अगो अबाउट हाउ देयर वाज लिटरली लाइक अ माउंटेन ऑफ क्लोथ्स या इन अ वेस्ट 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 लैंडफिल uh and and it was it, it, the, the the article tagline was the cost of fast yes. fashion yes so yes. do you want to talk a little bit about that i mean how fast fashion is directly in conflict with sustainability kya fast fashion aur fast fashion hai kya yeah, sabse pehle to mujhe lagta hai aapko fast fashion ki paribhasha samjhani padegi absolutely uh, lay persons yeah. ke liye ki yeah. hum na chahte hue bhi fast fashion ke victim ban rahe hain absolutely how are we becoming victims of fast fashion without even realizing absolutely no i think uh, this entire conversation came into effect when uh, rana plaza incident hua tha 2013 mein uh, the entire factory collapsed right there you know in in bangladesh and it became such a huge issue as to why because it almost 1100 people were killed and mostly were women and children so this entire thing came to notice it was always happening we just didn't know this enough you know since years and it took that really bad tragic incident to happen for us to understand that something is going on in the world and we don't know what what what's that so i remember i was in uh, i i was probably you know like in school when that happened in 2013 back and uh, it just like became such a news all over the world and you know like how fashion took on the world in terms of the most uh, worst kind of scenario is that it's saying fast fashion kills and that was the first kind of fist jo mera uh, you know w- was with f- uh, fast fashion is that what what we have been doing over the years is this fast fashion what we wear is this fast fashion what exactly is fast fashion right so all these clothes right that are built in these big factories you know at at where workers are getting the minimum wage and these materials are being sourced from the most uh, you know in or in the most inorganic way and they're being made into these clothes which you can't even wear to be honest gold for more than so if you buy like a top you know which is like but right now it's like super understandable what fast fashion is is something is super cheap like you get a top at like let's say 1 dollar or like a dress at like 2 dollars that dress is not really going to last for you know more than two occasions for you so that that that's what you understand is that okay it, because since you know as south asians as indians we have been grown up with with a mindset that a saree is preserved through generations it's it's carried on through generations how is you know a dress at the end of the day is not even like you know able to like get you through to like from two like you know to from two to sort of three occasions what's happening with this dress or this top right so i think the entire conversation stem from that is that especially you know for south asian people is that we preserve things for years and years how is this happening is that what we are wearing is not really aligning with uh, what we know as 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 people you know as as asian girls we don't know like because our sarees are being passed on you know our mothers have passed down sarees to us which are like 50 year old and how does a cloth survive 50 years like how do you do that and then we are introduced to this this dress or this this new fast fashion kind of scenario where on instagram dress, your clothing or, suddenly you see this irresistible outfit which looks amazing, amazing. you order it firstly the fabric is crap yeah. you can't breathe and absolutely it is and then then in in two wears is falling apart yeah absolutely so it's it's the moment you wear it you realize ye ek bar ke baad to you cannot wear it there is no like if you wear it twice oh my god that's going to be like another uh, you know like miracle uh, happening that oh you like you wore it twice so I, that is the kind so of it, you know let me interrupt you for one second so is the answer that one should invest into better pieces that can stay with you uh, as classics for longer i a, think no. yeah and and b uh, how does one prevent succumbing to uh, to this stuff that's constantly being you know thrown at you everywhere from billboards from ads from emailers uh, should one have like two three statement uh, or critical pieces every season what do you do i mean what is your mantra do you buy something and uh, i mean i remember i used to follow this rule i still do because my cupboard space is finite so if i buy two new things i take out two old things yeah. and i put them in a place to give away yeah. my nieces have uh, have the first right on those clothes and um i all my life i grew up in hand me downs of my cousins yeah. 
yeah. because that was our culture yeah. so my older cousins passed on close to me i grew up in them and then i passed them on to my younger cousins because clothes yeah. were really good quality yeah. and they yeah, lasted absolutely. absolutely so, so i think you know what one practice sustainability in today's world kapro ko lekar agar aap i think pas kaise kiya jaye no goal but you know that the entire conversation then again comes down to like one single fact is that the most sustainable outfit you will ever find is the one that's already in your wardrobe no matter that you know you bought it from now from like a now considered fast fashion company the point is that it's there and what you could do with it is is you know it shows your intention of how sustainable you want to be so at the end of the day you always like want to answer you know they say the sustainability are yaar ye the sustainability is expensive because a dress b is like you know it's 5000 rupees you know it's like it's that much you know in indian currency or it starts from there how will we be sustainable we getting this top for like 500 rupees so why wouldn't we choose something which is 500 rupees over 5000 rupees so i think that that it becomes difficult to be honest you know in a country like ours where people are still people uh, either they have too much spending power or they don't so this entire conversation also becomes economical right in in, in an economy way of things it's it's only fair that you think you have 500 rupees doge for a for maybe a knock off or a top rather than investing 5 is 5000 rupees for some people is a huge huge amount and for most people to be honest you know if you come from like a developing nation or from like a global south nation but i think at the end of the day you know you don't have to buy that 5000 rupees dress you just have to know that whatever you have bought you could do so much more with that rather than investing more in something else so i think that's definitely you know one intention of you moving away from fast fashion i don't like blaming you know or victimizing people from like my own country you know i will never indulge in telling them are no no you promote fast fashion you wear fast fashion and everything because people have done that to me you know like i've gone to places and in conferences where people have been like no you know like you're having a starbucks or you know you're having like something out of a plastic cup this is contributing to this and i just have one thing to say is that we are not to be blamed you cannot blame the victims this is victim blaming max because what we can do we are doing the best that we can in terms of how we will move forward it depends on how we will policyize you know each we we have to invest in policy there has to be a government initiative there has to be you know subsidized uh, value of things on you know what we can't afford right now but that all comes from a bigger kind of picture if you look at people there are amazing naive people of this country you know like nice people who are who have only enough to to have enough but at the end of the day i think this is a conversation where you where you say that what can we do with something that's already in my house you know, even if it's fast but that's really hitting the nail on the head ashwarya the most sustainable choice for what you uh what you have what you want to wear is what's already in your wardrobe but the trick is how do you make it contemporary how do you style it how do you do that without the ladies and the, the miserable ladies of high heels confidential getting upset yeah. Look at that. Okay, I want to, I want to, I want to come in here. I, I have a question. You know, uh, when we talk about, you know, it, it's a great statement to say that the the most sustainable thing is already in our closet. But you know, we have to go and go and attend weddings. We have to attend uh, functions, etc. What What is your perspective on the rental market for yeah. clothes that are already there? So, yeah, I think I, is that is that, that something that cool. some of you would think about? Goal will answer. Alex, Alex, I should have taken that first. I think uh, you know the entire. concept of circular economy in fashion there are a lot of platforms like saratoria there was stage 3 uh, you know they're doing so much circular fashion in terms of renting you know like if i have like something i can just rent it for other people to like you know for it to be circular and stuff i a i completely get the idea and i also feel that it's growing a lot in terms of even indian economy and how you know people are responding to it even as a viewer or as a consumer i have seen that change coming in but i also feel you know at weddings uh, we have had you know like we have moms and you know grandparents and who not who have who literally have you know these sarees that they have preserved since generation then i will again you know stress on it is that it just becomes more 
more in value when something in, is preserved you know something is 50 years old and you feel like how is this sari 50 years old how is this outfit how is this able to be you know have an entire life cycle because our clothes are not sustaining you know even like a days kind of uh, time so i think everything i, I think at the entire intention matthew i feel has to move from uh, you know the quality over quantity you need to have quality you need to say that you know this outfit is 10 years old it's 15 years old i've preserved it you know then it's made its life cycle you know all together it's it's reached a point where i have maximized on on this so yeah i think that's that's, great. that's a great way of looking at uh, uh, at things me personally i got married in my mother's wedding lehenga so it was a recycled wow. 40 year old lehenga 35 year old lehenga my uh, my 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 second outfit was my mother in law's wedding outfit so you know uh, and, and today also like I, i i mean i was speaking earlier i'm not making any new clothes i think i'm going to be wearing sarees i've had for 20 years uh, i'm always recycling and you know it's a great conversation starter uh, that you know oh this is from when i was again you know i i never lose an opportunity to remind people that i uh, guess we'll fit into the same clothes when i was 25 years away so yeah oh. that is one go go so, like think we see like, your uh, your post from 10 years ago yeah, that you're wearing yeah, the I, same t-shirt or swim shirt or i always because a i think that you have to own that matthew rather than being embarrassed yeah. of it and you know the kind of fashion watch dogs we have the self styled watch dogs who uh, i don't know i mean what they how they what they what their genuine mental state is but their whole job is about critiquing how somebody turns out and an oh, oh she wore this there i at a very early stage i should have maybe 15 years ago stopped caring about what they wrote and what they said and yeah. i think for me the joy of of getting married in clothes that belong to my mother and my, my mother in law outweigh any piece of designer sabdisachi or anything in the world that could possibly be there i mean today with all due respect to sabdisachi phenomenal designer he's right up there when it comes to wedding clothes for me my mother's lehenga is far more valuable than anything that any designer could create absolutely so absolutely that is what we and that comes directly into conflict with the way fashion is marketed right absolutely right? so we are encouraged to constantly and again there's an economy there so which brings us back to the circular economy yeah. how yeah. do we create clothes because after all fashion is an industry yeah. and fashion is a, a microcosm of the larger economy absolutely. how do we create a circular economy where we don't take away the livelihood of people who you know uh, i mean i don't think sabisachi will be impacted but you know there are others who could be potentially impacted by people choosing to make sustainable choices how do you how do you take how would you address that ki hum log kapde khareedne band kar de industry ka kya hoga no i that's true that is true i think the entire but the, it also like stems a lot from when you're a woman you're a young girl it it's more like you have to do even more extra than you know people from other gender yeah, yeah. have to because yeah, i was no sorry i sorry i have to matthew was saying we have to buy clothes men are under no pressure they have to have three suits and two black kurta pajamas and white kurta pajama it's women the disproportionate burden of of having to get new clothes actually on women sorry over to you aishwarya exactly so you know like okay. if matthew wears a black kurta twice or thrice people will think third time it's definitely different he does not have to prove that it's different from the first time or what he wore but when when women are concerned you are you know you're dissected so much into every way that becomes like a burden all together is it oh like you're a women you're in fashion you know Are you are you copying this from someone? Wearing this from someone? Are you like repeating your clothes? But I think you know, as to be honest, Gul, I keep saying that at every forum is that as you know, as South Asian people, we have taken pride in our culture and in our heritage, and you know, in our intention of being uh, these people who love to repeat clothes. They they love to repeat it. They love to preserve it, and world should learn from how we do it. Because clearly, they have no. The entire world seems to have no idea about preserving things. And here, you know, you look at this huge culture. You know, this this in depth understanding of what. culture and our heritage in indians could do and you know south asians on the on the whole kind of uh, index so i think there's a lot of learnings here that people can come and take is that we have always stuck to our roots and i think also as indians people who have like forwarded too much we need to come back to our roots we need to come back to our you know like we need to go back to our own roots and you know take you know things from there I should. I, I I love the direction in which this conversation is headed. You know, I I think it's so important that people like yourself and Gul, 
people who have others who look up to to yourselves right as you know uh, uh, trend setters as trend setters in, in you know in, in a particular path it's important that when you convey that it's great that i can do it and you know friends of mine do it my family does it then i think it becomes acceptable because i think what happens is uh, our generation or maybe even the generation younger to me has this peer pressure right and they need to keep up they need to you know be out there on social media people are looking at what they're wearing but if they are able to own it and say that look i, I mean this is what i wear and i wear this like 10 times or 20 times uh, over the years because i believe that it causes detrimental harm to uh, to the planet i think that's that's a fantastic message and that's pretty much what we want uh, through e talk to actually these are the things that we want to talk about the small changes that we can make uh, which will have a positive impact on society how gul said she wore her mother's lehenga on, on her wedding and if if gul panag does it it's cool it's cool like you know i I'm, I'm, Even for every one Gulpanag, there are forty others who are sort of uh, wearing fancy things, uh, you know, from designer. But it is, I think the important thing is you have to own the change, Matthew. Absolutely. The great and you have to do it in spite of and despite of the wave and what everybody else is doing. Because you have to have a spine that's strong enough to bear the weight of your own convictions. And I think all of us have it. It's just that we get uh, we get become under pressure. and yeah. it, it sort of goes away um i think we're also kind of running to a space where we should start looking at winding down matthew uh, yeah. i think we don't want we don't want sort of people to drop off because uh, they feel that they've allocated more time than they had originally planned uh, let's let's look at um let's look at maybe you know a message from you in compassing your learnings as a sustainability warrior aishwarya and what are the three things that you want to tell people to start practicing today i mean we've already spoken about recycling clothes uh, we've already spoken about making sure that we go back to our roots of um, of preserving heritage uh, keeping your uh, your you know your father's sherwani to your for yourself to wear your mother's lehenga your own sarees but uh, for the generation of today that probably is not going to wear a saree on a wedding every day i mean weddings and you know uh, festivals or occasions on a day to day basis what are your three uh, takeaways to practice sustainability here and now wo kya teen cheeze jo aap bol sakte ho aaj abhi isi waqt is life ke khatam hone ke baad hum kya wo teen cheeze hain jo hum immediately practice karna shuru kar sakte hain sustainability ke madhyam se absolutely i think you know coming back to i think a lot of cars now there are seven hours but you know refresh revive recycle and that all stems from how you can make your own statement in the world but i feel like you know as bloggers or content creators as influencers refresh on, revive i'm writing that down yeah, revive recycle recycle and refresh sounds that you know you refresh your own wardrobe whenever you can whenever you want to without indulging into the thoughts of how expensive sustainability is going to be for you because it's not it's not i think the entire argument is super redundant when it comes sustainability is expensive because nobody is like should be pressurized into buying sustainable outfits when they can be sustainable with their intentions and with their kind of skill set at the end of the day i feel as as content creators as influencers as people you know online who are who are always like you know trying to like indulge their audience into a certain fact or a certain you know like with a certain brand align them here and there i feel at the end of the day you need to have your own kind of style and at the to be to be just your own person because i feel that you know trends would only last that long you have to last longer as a person what is your statement going to be you know what is it that defines gul panag what is it that defines matthew koshi what is it that that, that 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 will define ashwarya sharma because we're three different individuals our styles couldn't be we couldn't be you know more dissimilar yet similar in our goal to be you know sustainable at, but at the end of the day it's achieved for all of us through different ways for me it's sustainable fashion for you guys it's automobile it's it's evs you know it's it's adoption of energy it's transition from you know a whole a whole perspective into a different kind of you know energy green transitions so all of us could be you know like completely different individuals but at the end of the day we need to know that what can we do better for ourselves 
for our parents for for people that we care about we have to live longer on this planet you, the facts are right there you're not going to survive longer if things continue to be going this way so you know how i have started it i've always believed that i don't promote fast fashion i have said no to deals i've said no to money major big money you know when they were offering me money for like just promoting fast fashion that was my decision to not not do this now maybe somebody you know who's who's not in the same kind of you know who doesn't come from the same perspective they still do it but at the end of the day i think we need to like shift the entire perspective and complete narrative into what's going to last and if you're going to last with it so I, I yeah that's very well captured and i think also one more thing i'd like to add to it is that you know something that you know someone i i follow mentioned here how are um how are we passing on the message of sustainability to the next generation so we uh, can make sure that we inculcate in our children sustainability in fact a lot of the a lot of the schools today are talking about sustainability uh, my son came to me one day and said ki i want to go blogging so <laughs> my husband didn't know what that word meant and uh, i because uh, i tend to keep you know watch a few things here and there on instagram i, I catch some things but it's a term that a lot of people are not familiar with but in his school he was taught that you know you should go plugging and tell us what you did so he now yeah. takes a little plastic bag and gloves and goes around picking up garbage from around our uh, you know yeah. our community it's, it's something he wants to do on a, on sunday and um, and that that was one i think uh, children are being inculcated most schools are doing it i think parents have to also take the advocacy and and the role model ship ahead by by making sure that you know we just don't run to the, the mall every time there is an occasion to buy clothes clothes should not be the expression of how you celebrate necessarily it should be many things but it shouldn't just be limited to to clothes uh, because we just like some people uh, equate reward a reward mechanism with shopping and that's how fast fashion thrives kyunki aapko lagta hai ki agar ye sab hoga fir main apne aap ko ek cheez leke dungi yeah agar main aapko ye agar ye hoga to ab aapka reward mechanism kapde khareedne aur shopping ke sath kafi had tak link ho gaya hai so i think bachcho ko agar us cycle se hame break karna hai i think ye hame bhi shayad madde nazar rakhna padta you know padta hoga love it absolutely well sir i think we have a lot of questions coming in i think we won't take some audience questions uh, is renting better than owning uh, i think aishwarya already answered that definitely the world is moving towards a shared economy uh, is 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 our audience evolved enough to make this system work let's swati b so i think renting and sharing i mean i use i think sharing is a better word um jab aap koi cheez kahin aur se share karte ho shayad aap uski keemat dete ho because after all everything costs something a shared way of living uh, is actually how we used to be jab hum hunter gatherers the koi it was not necessary ki aap har cheez own kare kyunki agar aapke ghar mein us cheez ki 24 ghante ya pura saal aavashyakta nahi hai to kisi aur ko aap de sakte hain use use karne ke liye wohi thought process se hum ek tribal culture mein rehte the aur phir ownership ka concept aaya aur phir ownership ko incentivize kiya gaya har cheez own kare करके ओन कर करके आई थिंक द शेयर्ड इकॉनमी इज द वे इज द वे टू वे टू गो फॉरवर्ड फ्रॉम आई मीन इज इज आई वुड शुड वी लुक एट सम मोर ऑडियंस क्वेश्चंस दैट आर एक्चुअली पर्टिनेंट आई थिंक वन क्वेश्चन दैट आई हैड फॉर बोथ ऑफ यू आई मीन यू कैन जस्ट लाइक जस्ट लाइक क्विक क्वेश्चन दैट आई हैड इन माइंड सिंस रियली लॉन्ग सिंस यू नो यू 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 आर अ कंपनी यू नो व्हिच इज डेडिकेटेड एंड जस्ट बिल्ट अराउंड द एंटायर इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल कांसेप्ट and you know in in india it's as new as it can get but it's also something that people really sort of you know they're now saying oh you know do you have an ev car or do you drive an electric vehicle and something you know it, 10 years 20 years back also like just 10 years back to be honest we used to see just like one or two cars on the road jiske piche actually green number hota tha and you know that used to like, that used to be like a huge thing that oh like you know this car is electrical now things are changing but how do you think that you know we as people because at the end of the day again the concept is that evs are more expensive than than the other diesel or petrol or you know other forms of uh, cars that are there and is the government's role in actually subsidizing it can increase in terms of making it more kind of easy on the people who are buying it so i think that was that was one question that i you know get a lot but i don't think i'm the best person to answer this so you know i will just like let you sort of give your insights on this just one this one thing matthew why don't you take that yeah 
great question see look there's only so much of a role that the government can do as far as uh, you know a new directive is concerned and they've set the direction right right they've said that we've got this goal by 2030 we want an x amount of vehicles to be electric and they've set the directive and to incentivize the directive they've also there is the fame policy which incentivizes the adoption of electric vehicles after that it actually comes down to total cost of ownership at the end of the day right like as a consumer you need to feel that what the government is directing is the right thing and how do you do that is that after the initial incentives wear out by then the market starts picking up the direction of the market also gets guided similarly people will get to experience an electric vehicle i don't know if you experience an electric car or driving and i think you might may have i uh Absolutely. we've discussed it before uh just the sheer pick up the noiselessness absolutely yes. no rattling uh lower maintenance uh, just the sheer thrill of driving an electric vehicle over a petrol car is so far ahead it's like the evolution in technology right it's it's like moving from the button phone to uh the the screen there's no way we're going to go back and uh, that's exactly how this industry is also uh, poised to roll and when you spend 10 rupees uh, a kilometer on a petrol or a diesel car an ice car uh, and you spend a rupee or a little less than that on an electric car there's i mean these are things that you're not going to think about so there is going to be that little time that is going to take for us to to jump onto the wagon yeah. uh, also with larger volumes the price points are also going to become a lot more affordable uh, so that that's my perspective on this i i believe that the government is already set the right direction uh, i wouldn't expect the entire industry to change just based on government subsidies and incentives i would expect this industry to start picking up simply because the technology is far superior and people find the total cost of ownership to be far less than owning a petrol car yeah so that's my view uh, gul you want to jump in here i think you've used an electric car more than most people in this country i think it's been about 8 years if i'm not mistaken uh, yeah eight, eight and a half years as primary vehicle of commute so two things yeah. as far as electric goes completely agree with matthew so much fun to drive uh, no lag in power delivery so it's an acceleration no matter what size of car you drive a very small car but it still outperforms uh, you know three segments above uh, at uh, uh, hydrocarbon cars so great fun to drive um and i think there there are two parts to the other piece the why are we seeing a slower rate of adoption the first part uh, you know i think matthew has addressed very well of course the fact that there is a gap between how much uh, a compatible car costs uh, with the you know internal combustion engine and uh, an electric car because electric is comparatively newer technology but is by far more innovative is more efficient uh, the first generation electric cars are 92% efficient the most efficient uh, internal combustion cars are the ones you see on race tracks which are not our street cars like formula 1 cars they are 48% efficient in terms of the fuel that goes in and how much of that fuel turns converts That's into actual energy great point so 95% in the first generation versus 48% in millions of dollars of research backed formula 1 cars yes that's the efficiency argument right but um the one argument that i think is the strongest for electric is the lack of emission now there are two parts to it the lack of emission in real time when the vehicle is on the road and the lack of emission in terms of the source of power yeah. so a lot of the naysayers are like are able what's the point of driving an electric car if your car is being charged by dirty power let me address that piece first india is going to be the largest producer of renewable energy in the next 5 years we should have hit that marker already now but the 2 years of covid uh, delayed substantially our solar power generation plans so uh, that day is not far when the bulk of the power that comes to the grid is from renewable sources of energy primarily solar as well as hydro yeah. so thermal power plant uh, generated power is going to start waning every year year on year yeah. in terms of its proportion in the larger grid uh, contribution 
So that is the first piece. I think it's important to address the elephant in the room because everybody talks about what's the point of having an electric car if the power that's charging it is dirty. That same power is also powering your home. Yeah. But you don't stop living in your home because of the fact yeah. that it's, it's dirty power. You continue to do it till a better alternative is available, Absolutely. and a better alternative is around the corner. And we will be the largest producers of uh, renewable energy in the next five years if all goes on track. The second piece is the emission piece. Um, yes. I was going through some pictures of the early days of lockdown in March of 2020, and the third day of lockdown, Bombay AQI was at 48. By early April, it was 13, one three. So, it in taking uh, polluting cars off the roads. Now that's a very large argument because within the segment of hydrocarbon cars yeah. uh, and internal combustion engines, there is Passenger vehicles, which are probably very very clean, because they go through multiple stages of uh, checks and homogenized homogenized homogenization. Um, but then there's the commercial vehicles on whom the check is far lesser. So it's not just the passenger vehicles. In fact, it could be argued that uh, a good CRD diesel engine is probably negligibly more polluting than, say, an electric engine in terms of its emissions. Yes. Uh, in terms of an electric uh, electric car, uh, the contribution being very marginal compared to zero emission because it's it's very very um, refined engines. But it's not those alone. It's the dust. It's the construction sites. It's the commercial vehicles which you know continue to ply well after their age. There is today a policy for scrapping personal vehicles. In Delhi, you can't have a vehicle older than ten years. That same regulation is still very lax towards commercial vehicles. Yes, and the bulk. Of the pollution, even when Delhi's uh, annual uh, air quality crisis starts, which will about, which, will, which will happen in about a month from now, yeah, yeah. it's always about the, the brunt is borne by the passenger vehicles, and because of the sensitivity of the subject of commercial vehicles and freight, yeah, yeah. that never gets touched. Absolutely. And construction sites and and you know larger particulate matter, which contributes to air pollution. But to close the, I think the strongest argument. In favor of electric mobility is that it immediately gives you cleaner air to breathe across the board. So we just have to find ways in which to normalize that, make more people adopt electric, and uh, and while hoping that there are commercial solutions from green hydrogen, because bigger trucks for long range, uh, long distance driving, we would need hydrogen, you know, green hydrogen yeah. for that, and yeah. that technology is still a couple years away. Yeah. So I would see, I mean. In an op- in an optimistic scenario, in about fifteen years, our emission levels in cities will fall dramatically as commercial vehicles begin to adopt green hydrogen um, wow. because of the heavier payload, and all passenger vehicles either move towards electric or then hybrid in the, in the meantime. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So at the end of the day, it's all about you know like again, it's it's it's. Contribution of like public sector, contribution of individuals, it's contribution of like every bit involved in a society to actually make it happen. But I do, uh, you know, agree with you, Gul, on that. That the, the, we are fighting an entire mindset. It's you know, it doesn't change in a day. You know, it doesn't really like happen in a day. But I think at the end of the day, that we are trying to do as individuals, as people, you know, who who do what we do, is to like change that mindset. You know, shift the game and put it in a more kind of you know. Uh, a uh, better way forward yes that's great Perfect. thank you so much for that ashwarya it's delightful chatting Me? with you again albeit okay. electronically and now we must yeah. fix that and meet in person uh, soon and i'm sure matthew is going to make that happen matthew apnal work to be honest. thank you so much and i look forward to doing that with both of you absolutely absolutely thank you for your thank time ashwarya you. and thank you for all of you who Bye. joined in and you know put across your incredible and insightful questions thank you very much thank you guys thank you bye bye bye